know, it's not only that WWE knows how to fuck up ending the pay-per-views, but they really know how to fuck up the shows that precede pay-per-views. I mean, come on, man. It <sighs> Survivor Series ending was middle-fingered all the way to the max. They shouldn't have ended it that way. They should have ended it, you know, another way to keep us interested or maybe a heel turn or anything but Triple H pedigreeing Kurt Angle and letting Shane cover him and then taking the win for himself. I mean, yeah, he knows his way into the event in the first place. But to have it end like that and then Braun Strowman threaten him and then Braun Strowman power slamming him and then have virtually little to no aftermath with that, it's just dangling the carrot in front of us as motherfucking usual. But Raw starts off with Steph Mick fake tits coming out and basically saying that Kurt Angle's job is 1,000% secure because Raw ending up winning four matches to three. Even though three out of four championship, the champion versus champion matches, SmackDown won. What does that say about Raw's champions? The tag team, the mid card, the women's champion. The only Raw champion that actually won is Brock Lesnar. And that was through the skin of his teeth, pretty much, because AJ Styles, you know, he put up a very good fight, he put up a very good match, and that match is just worth watching. But, okay, so she says that, yeah, I'm going to introduce the person that led Raw to victory, Triple Bitch. She introduces Triple Bitch, and yes, I'm calling him that because I've been calling him that for years, but yeah, Survivor Series ending, yeah, put a stamp on that for a while. So... Triple Bitch comes out, and before he can say one word, dun, 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 Kurt Angle comes out with purpose. He hits the ring, gets right in Triple Bitch's face. And he's like, this is not Raw General Manager talking to you right now. This is the Olympic gold medalist, WWE Hall of Famer, Kurt Angle talking to you. If you attack me from behind again, you can take this job and shove it because I'm coming after you. Pretty substantial threat right in his face but stephanie mcmahon has to intervene and she's like but you are the general manager and you are talking to the coo and it's like oh god <sighs> so okay who comes out after that jason jordan to basically no reaction except some booze he hits the ring and he's like yeah you know why don't you try pedigreeing me now you could hear that even though a bike wasn't on him. And he's like, yeah, I want to match against Triple H tonight. He even got a yes chant from, the, from that. And it's like, and Stephanie is like, wait, wait, wait. In the mood that Triple H is right here, right now, he will just, he will totally tear you apart. He'll destroy you, da, da, da. This is the, the game, the Cerebral Assassin, blah, 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 blah. So, who comes out? Braun Strowman. Hmm. Okay. It's funny because Stephanie McMahon is like, look, okay, before Braun Strowman comes out, Jason Jordan was like, what, are you a coward? And that's like, okay, hmm. Triple H even starts taking off his jacket, suit jacket and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, let him go at it. At least have a bra, at least something. But yeah, Triple H is not afraid of anyone. Braun Strowman comes out and gets right in the face of Triple H, Triple Bitch. And what does Triple Bitch do? He backs off. And he walks away. And Stephanie was like, okay, you want to wrestle so bad. You all want to see action so bad. So here's a match. Jason Jordan versus Braun Strowman. Okay. Yeah. So Jason Jordan wanted to face Triple H. Braun Strowman wanted a piece of Triple H. But then they put them against each other. Okay. That's fine. All right. Okay. Yeah. So Samoa Joe goes against Finn Balor in a pretty, pretty good match. Finn Balor passes out to the Coquina Clutch. Okay, that's fine. I, I would have liked Finn Balor to win and move on and actually be something as far as a contender for the Universal Championship. Since we just saw AJ Styles versus Brock Lesnar, why can't we see Finn Balor versus Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship? Why can't we see that? Unless they're trying to save that for WrestleMania. Finn Balor winning the Royal Rumble, that would be something. <laughs> but yeah, Samoa so Joe actually beats Finn Balor, and it's like, okay, yeah, that's fine. Jason Jordan goes up to Kurt Angle and says that he's still hurt. 
well, I thought you were 100%. No, I just said that in order to get Triple H, you know, and it's like, ugh. But he gets fired up at the end of the interview. He's like, yeah, I think I can beat Braun Strowman. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, let's see that. So, Asuka faces Dana Brooke. Why? Why the fuck? <sighs> Long story short, Asuka wins. So, you get Jizz TV. <sighs> so, what excuses is he going to come up with since he lost in a three-on-one match at the Survivor Series. Oh, yeah, he says bravo to Baron Corbin. Yeah, bravo, you managed to be meaning, you managed to have meaning since you faced me. Motherfucker, you lost to who was basically the bottom of the barrel as far as mid-card division, as far as Money in the Bank winner, as far as United States champion, you lost to that guy, okay? The one who struggled against Sin Cara, you lost to that guy even though you had help, assistance from your Miz Taraj. What does that say about you? So anyway, he was like, yeah, he introduces Roman Reigns, Roman doesn't come out. Roman Reigns, Roman doesn't come out. Yeah, this is very disrespectful. Look, he doesn't deserve, the Miz doesn't res deserve respect as a wrestler because he's not a wrestler. He's just a talker that gets up in there and botches moves, can't put on good or great matches 100% alone, and he's not convincing as a threat. And I will stick by that until it's proven otherwise. Look, I'm open-minded. I'm willing to give everybody a chance, but it's been 10 fucking years. 10 years, over 10 years, over a fucking decade. Even Cena has put on five-star matches. And people are sick of seeing him and saying that he can't wrestle and so on. And John Cena sucks. But you all think The Miz is awesome? You fuckers don't know wrestling if that's the case. If I'm insulting you, tough. Grow some, grow some balls, challenge me down below. Don't let, the, don't let my words hurt your fucking feelings. Because words don't hurt mine. Just plead, just plead your case. But anyway, Roman Reigns doesn't come out alone. The Shield comes out. And the Miz is like, I didn't ask for the Shield. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And he wants to, he wants credit for the Shield getting back together. If it wasn't for me, and, and you two wouldn't have made up, and you, all three of you wouldn't have gotten back together, and da 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 da, da. Well, you kind of mocked the Shield and wanted to make fun of the Shield and wanted to be dominant like the Shield, even though you did nothing in your in your two factions with you and the Miz and with you and the Bar. You did nothing. You were just the voice and leading and directing traffic. You couldn't even get it done at TLC <laughs> when it was a five on three, and Roman Reigns was absent. But anyway, huh? Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose, okay. We know that they're going to be getting a title shot for the tag team championships. And Seth Rollins is like, oh, yeah, we're gonna, we know that we're going to be getting our championships back when we get a crack at them. And Roman Reigns is like, wait a minute, I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be the only one without a title. And, he, and he's like, okay, Miz has a title. So, okay, Miz says he wants to fight for the title. Okay, so there's an Intercontinental Championship Challenge. And Bo Dallas is like, you don't come here to the freaking <laughs> Miss TV and, and, and make demands or make challenges. You want to go through him, you got to go through us. Seriously? <sighs> so what did the SEAL do? They go through them. They go through Curtis Axel, they go through Bo Dallas, and the Miz pussies out and runs away. You see, Miz is perfect for a manager, but not as a wrestler, not as a, a holder of any of these belts here. He degrades every title that he's ever held, period. And most of them was by help, or most of them was by riding coattails of somebody. But anyway, he runs away, the shield decimate the gist, Jiraj, and it's like, okay, fine. They interview Braun Strowman and he's, he's like, yeah, what do you have to say about Jason Jordan saying he's not afraid of you? And Strowman was like, good, <laughs> at least he's different. That's, you know, including Triple H, which Triple H, basically, Triple Bitch, is basically afraid of Strowman. Ha ha ha. So you get Dean Ambrose versus Sheamus, which Dean Ambrose comes out on top. Now it's like, okay, let's just put this championship match together already. Oh, wait. 
Hmm. It's going to be a while since Raw has a pay-per-view. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. Because SmackDown has the next pay-per-view, Clash of Champions. Raw doesn't have one until the Royal Rumble. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Huh. <sighs> Jason Jordan goes up to Matt Hardy to ask advice about how to deal with Braun Strowman and Matt's heart. Like, look, I've been in the ring with Giants. I've been in the ring with Big Show, Mark Henry, and so on and so forth. But Braun Strowman, those are, you know, monsters. But he's the monster of my men. And, you know, yeah, he wants to get his hands on you and so on and so forth. So Jason Jordan is trying to physically and mentally prepare himself for this match. But at least he's not trying to back out of the match. At least he's not trying to say, cancel it. At least he's not begging like Jodeci in order to fucking get things changed. No, he's asking how to prepare for it, at least. Huh. <sighs> Alexa says Charlotte got lucky. So, okay, let me, all right. Charlotte Flair got lucky. Seriously, Alexa? No, uh, I'm not hearing that. Huh. <sighs> so, Mickey comes out and says, okay, Survivor Series is over, so let's focus on here and now. It's, you know, I want a title shot. Basically, Mickey gets laughed at, but Bailey comes out and is like, okay. Even though that Alexa was like, this has been my year, 2017 has been my year, and so on and so forth. Okay, we could see that. Yeah, all right, but you've been Ducky Nia Jax, Ducky Nia Jax, Ducky Nia Jax. But then Bailey was like, okay, 2017 isn't over, and she wants a shot. Oh, well, what do you know? Sasha was like, okay, no offense, Bailey, but we don't want to see a hugger. Everyone will want to see a boss. Yeah, no offense, Mickey. Oh, God, I'm just like, in this segment already, just end it. Just, okay, please just end it. And then Alexa, but, oh, wait, Alicia Fox comes out, and I'm like, no, 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 no. <sighs> Alexa says that no one deserves a shot, and she tries to walk away. Kurt Angle is like, whoa, 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 whoa. Huh. Yeah, we're going to determine who's going to be the next contender for your title in a Fatal 4-Way match. Okay. Fatal 4-Way with these women happen. And one of the best things ever in Raw happens. The return of Paige. Okay. She's like, did you miss me? I'm back. But I didn't come alone. She goes down, and who shows up? Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville. <sighs> okay. All right. Both of them were for NXT, and all right. Basically gets in there, and they beat down everybody in the match. I don't understand why the bell rang, though. It was a fatal four-way, so it was a fatal four-way booze. Isn't it no disqualification? But the bell rang, and now it is a no contest. Huh? I don't understand why WWE can pick and change its rules at times. It doesn't make any sense. And it's insulting. So, in the back, Alexa, okay, she walks up to the three women and was like, all right, let me introduce myself. <laughs> I'm Alexa. All right, yeah, nice to meet you. Said, nice to meet you. And then what happens? Alexa gets jumped. She gets jumped, she gets laid out, and I'm like, <laughs> the way to make a freaking statement. I mean, again, I would like to see them jump other people like Nia Jax and Asuka, who was com conveniently absent after taking on Dana Brooke. <sighs> oh, well. Anyway, Braun Strowman versus Jason Jordan ends in a DQ, even though there wasn't much of a match to begin with because Jason Jordan, he tries to lift up Braun Strowman. He actually gets him up, but his knee gives out. And next thing you know, Jason Jordan leaves the ring. Yeah, I mean, Jason Jordan got tossed around a couple of times and he even got avalanched in corners, but at least he was in there. At least he tried until his knee gave out. Gave out. And then Kane comes out, interferes. <sighs> match over by DQ, Braun Strowman. And Kane is just chair, chair, chair chair and then throat chair can goes away Braun Strowman <laughs> oh well I mean yeah okay I'm not really gonna cover the next match because it was just a clusterfuck of cru cruiserweights which which the face is winning I mean it was the Zoe train and then uh, no it was just a clusterfuck of cruiserweights that's all it was I can't take that shit seriously not 
on Raw, not on 205, nothing. I just can't. Each and every one of them has to develop a certain personality about them. Only Enzo has a personality, but I can't take him seriously as champion. You see, that's just... Uh, that, yeah. Okay, clusterfuck of cruiserweights. All right. So, Elias basically tries to sing a song about Matt Hardy, about his victory at the freaking pre-show of Survivor Series. So what does Matt Hardy do? He comes out and he attacks. Okay, fine. They brawl for a while. All right, that, that's cool. All right, fine. Uh, Jason Jordan is being checked on by Kurt Angle and the Jizz walks in, begs to get out of the match against Roman Reigns. See? Pussy. Once again, Miz proves my point. But Kurt Angle is like, no, you're going to defend your title anyway. So, Reigns versus Jizz. Hmm, how much you want to bet that someone is going to try to come out and, you know, either interfere or cause a distraction to try to get Miz to win? <laughs> and that's exactly what happens in the climax of the freaking match when the buyer comes out and tries to distract Roman Reigns and the Miz tries to roll up Roman Reigns and thank goodness he didn't pin him. And then the shield comes out, the rest of the shield comes out, attacks the buyer, and then a spear later, and we have a new Intercontinental Champion, Roman Reigns. The best thing is that the Miz is not Intercontinental Champion. But then, Roman Reigns is Intercontinental Champion. <sighs> Just like when Roman Reigns won the United States Championship, he basically sat on it, and no one one-on-one -on -one could take it, so they had to have a two-on-one -on -one match with Jericho and Kevin Owens, which Jericho actually pinned him and got his first United States Championship. Okay, so now we got two members of the Shield that are part of the Grand Slam Club. And I'm just like, all right, even though I wanted the Miz to lose this, I'm more happy about that than anything else. I am. But Roman Reigns, I just hope it's not the same situation as the United States title. So, yeah, he, he's the new Intercontinental Champion. And it's funny how the Jizz still needed some type of help in order to fucking try to keep the belt. I mean, it's like, come on, dude. And I lost all respect for Booker T. All respect for because all he kept doing is trying to give the Miz props. He he kind of he's trying to put him over every single week on Raw. He tries to put this motherfucker over, and I'm like, okay, damn, did he drink your cum? Because there's no other way that I could see that. I mean, he hasn't done anything in, in the ring. I, I'm sorry, you no, J just no. Out of all the shit that Booker T has been through in WCW and WWE, he gets props to this fucker, and it's like, no. Just, just, just no. Even though he's supposed to be the heel commentator, but su sucking on Miz is just, no. Just, uh, no. Just no. <laughs> but that was Raw, ending with a new Intercontinental Champion. Okay, fine. I, okay, I just didn't want the Miz getting close to the honky talk record as far as the, a single reign being above the honky talk. I just didn't, no, I, unacceptable, sorry. Even his seven reigns as Intercontinental Champion, even though a couple of them were like a, a, a day or so, but no, just, no. Anyway, what'd you think about the show? Do you think I'm full of shit? Do you agree or disagree with me? please leave a comment below. Hit that like button, hit subscribe, set up those notifications. I'm always open for a debate about wrestling. So please, if you have any problems with what I have just said, comment below. Drop kicks, body slams, throw motherfuckers over the top rope, both be hitting the floor. Yes, I'm a wrestling fan. This is the theme, and I'll see you later. Credits.